the appellate process here in New York? This case is a little different because, quite frankly, I think the level of reversible error here really uh, is quite considerable. It runs the waterfront of procedural to constitutional problems, including federal constitutional violations. I don't even see how you can meet the unanimity requirement in, uh, in the way that this thing was instructed. Yeah, they were unanimous that some crime was being committed on that secondary crime, but it's apparently between the jurors and God as to what that crime was, unless there's going to be some release of a jury form. We haven't seen that jury form, so and we don't know. And when you were inside that we would, or no. there was a special verdict form? No, and so we were all hoping that there might be a form that might bring clarity on that, uh, on that issue. But uh, no, I think that in the end, you're, you're going to have a reversal. I'm fairly confident of that. Now, in the New York appellate system, they have ruled for Trump. There are very good lawyers in the New York system and incredible people who want this system to work the way it's designed. I'm, I got to tell you, I am eternally an optimist. I was an optimist about a hung jury, and I'm an optimist now about the, the appellate judges. I think at some point, people will step forward and say, enough. You know, hating this man is not enough uh, to forget the, the lack of the evidence. And once again, I do not blame this jury. They were given instructions that made it very easy uh, to convict. And some of them might not have seen a real option not to, given how low these standards seem. Okay, Jonathan Turley, uh, Trey Gowdy, and Andy McCarthy, uh, it's been a long several weeks. Here we are, but it feels like this is just the start of the next process of this case, the next step of this case. Thank you all. Uh, for and we'll, I, I will look at it and see what your next writing is, because Andy is... Are you ready? Are you ready for Jesus? Uh, and we will do he that. knocks on everybody's right door. But you must reach down and turn the knob and invite him into your heart and make a U-turn in life. And that's what we need to hear from the justice system, a U-turn in life. Janine's been here. She's been able to give some comments, but you've got some other people here with some thoughts. And Greg, let me start with you as we got the news right here right about 5 o'clock. That surprise. This thing always felt preordained. Uh, it, it feels more arranged than a marriage in Kabul. I, I'm not, I guess that's why I'm not that broken up about it. Uh, the man thrives on adversity, and so do the American people. And this kind of only adds to the persuasive, persuasive power by proving his point that if you are a threat to power, they will try to just dis destroy you. And I do believe that, you know, Americans love the story of a lone man battling a corrupt system with his back against the wall, uh, as opposed to some invalid who is now the villain. When you, in this story, and, and these are all stories, there is a villain and there is a hero, and we now know who the villain is and who's behind this. What, we, we just saw something with our very own eyes, but we don't know what was going on behind the scenes. And I believe that there was a, a conscious collusion of allies that came together, it's pretty obvious, with a private strategy to eliminate a common shared adversary. This happened before with uh, uh, in the election, uh, I think it was Time Magazine that wrote about the cabal, the, the, ca the cabal, cabal, thank you, I said cabal earlier. Government, the legal system, the media. So what we saw was the outcome. What we didn't see was everything leading up to it, what was done secretly. Uh, and then we get this trial, which is paraded publicly. Uh, but we didn't see how this happened. I believe that they just gave Popeye a gallon of spinach laced with steroids and meth. And I think you're going to see this not... Uh, the numbers aren't going to go in Biden's favor. I think this will not only solidify the base, it will radicalize it. It will infuriate the independents and the undecideds. And those who see Biden as a desiccated, you know, barely alive person will not will will be, mm -hmm. I think, energized by this. See President Trump right now on your screen left, uh, leaving the courtroom there. We're keeping an eye on that matter. Okay, he's going to be heading back up to his. Uh, place at Trump Tower. One thing, uh, to your point about it, uh, spinach yeah. and fuel, the Trump donation site crashed a few minutes ago and it's still down, which means, that, uh, I think to your point, that the base will, would be energized. Uh, Win Red apparently also having similar problems. The sentencing would be July 11th, Jesse. The, uh, that's two weeks after the first presidential debate and four days before the RNC convention gets started, so it's all crutched. 
Yeah, Trump was found guilty because he beat Hillary and is about to beat Joe Biden. <laughs> I thought I'd be angry, but I feel this cool resignation, this resoluteness that we're wounded as a country and we're not going to go down. That we're going to get back up, we're going to regain our strength, and then we're going to vanquish the evil forces that are destroying this republic. Amen. And if you look at the American people, how are they looking at this? People are desperate for help from these politicians. For safety, I got my for own security. shock in life. And these at eight years old, not being able to vote, hatred, not being able to, to leave the because he threatens three the counties of Boone, power. Kenton, and Campbell these County to go to Cincinnati people. or go to Grant County or Obsessed Pendleton County or Gallatin County and without getting permission. Shameful. That. This man's life is a great tragedy. With and no opportunity to come before a grand jury that made a decision without even Hollywood speaking to me, without even contacting me. And then run off with Fox News 19 with the words of a liar and liars and truth, spreading negativism and lies about me on channel Fox News 19. Don't even return your phone cals. Don't answer your call about their lies. And it looks like he will be reelected. June is going to be a pivotal month, though, Dana, because well, we've seen the same thing happen to, this, to the nation, Donald says. Trump. And then the only difference is he's a wealthy man. He can fight back. We're not wealthy. Mm -hmm. We're barely alive financially because of health issues. But we fought as hard as we could with what we had. Closing the gap. We'll see if that sticks. And then you have a debate at the end of the month. So if Joe Biden and we fight down, by the truth. At the end of June, after and we say, this, it's, over it's a Joe Holy Biden. Spirit's job to convict. It's God's job to judge. He was angry, it's our job was rigged, to love. And we, all know it was we, all know and we love the people. But the key people from both parties. We love the people when not 12 men and women the Commonwealth of Kentucky get to decide, and Northern Kentucky. Million men and women get to decide. We love the and people. That is the key. So get out there and but some of us, um, why we still uh, love uh, you, we pray for your souls and lies I did nothing wrong. and deceitfulness <laughs> and thievery, um, stealing and we did hear a veteran's week, money is going to make some sort of for your own self use and not abiding by the man's will. We know written that four years earlier with witnesses and a notary sign. All legal. Done in U.S. Bank. And instead, you lie. Use deceitfulness while he's in hospice, dying, mentally unstable. The threat Trump poses to our democracy and you take advantage of him. He is running an increasingly unhinged campaign of free God knows and all. To be a dictator and your attorney, for our constitution to be your attorney, so he can regain shamefully, a second Trump term, shamefully, chaos, ripping away Americans' freedoms and fomenting handled the case, and the Americans knowing will reject that that it wasn't the truth. From the Biden campaign. Now, over to you, Harold. So it's a tough day for Fortunately, the, um, the pol politics for and the people voting um, took care of him and voted him out of office before system, and um, voted um, against him in his latest try to return to, to be state to representative. For me right now is just for strength. Thank goodness, bright, young, intelligent young man uh, uh, Mr. Roberts ran and won handily. For the state representative the seat. I hope people don't walk away uh, or that they, they don't take away from this is that our system doesn't work. As well as all uh, I give the other candidates Trump running under godly sense, principles. I a lot of credit for how he framed this one at the end Iran of well. his remarks a few minutes God ago. watch over uh, all of them. We have an appellate system. We have a Supreme Court or, 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 or appellate system in this state that will review this. And if uh, President Trump is not does not uh, uh, gain the kind of favor that he wants there, he can appeal even higher, but our system will work this out. Uh, and for anyone to suggest that a country that has survived the Revolutionary War, a civil war, 
uh, World War I, World War II, that we won't be able to make it through this. I'd say shame on you. We are a huge country with huge ideals and huge dreams and aspirations. Whether you support President Trump or not, he will have an opportunity to remedy this if the law is on his side. Uh, and I would hope that those who don't, don't like President Trump or who don't like his politics, don't take glee in this. Uh, don't take joy in this. Uh, this is a day in which justice was served at the first court, and we'll see what happens here over the next seven months, as I'm sure, uh, based on some of the enumeration we heard from Judge uh, Pirro and even, even from Andy McCarthy and Shannon Bream and others about the things that the president may be able to cite on appeal. Uh, but as we sit here tonight, I still have great confidence in our system. I hope we don't go attacking these jurors. Uh, it was a human exercise, jury deliber deliberations are, and I'm the one that hopes that these jurors do talk uh, and give us a sense of what happened yeah. uh, in that jury room. And, and they have the right to do that, every right to do I that. I noticed when Jonathan Turley was talking about the judge's instructions to the jury, you made a note. because, And I also remember before, I think you had said to Trey Gowdy that in your experience, the juries usually get it right. Um, what about the jurors here versus the judge, or what happened there? Well, first of all, I think it's important for people to understand that there is a, a huge connection between the jurors and the judge. The judge is the one who decides, you know, when they go, you know, to lunch, when they get a break, what they get for lunch, whether, you know, they're going to have their needs that we don't even hear about met in that deliberation room. And when I was on the bench, it, uh, without, uh, 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 in almost every case, I would say, the jurors would say to me, judge, did we get it right? And they want to know my opinion. And I would always say to them, you got it right. You're the jury. And so there's this connection between the judge and the jurors. So I'm not surprised at the verdict. I have, I mean, legally, I, I could take this on appeal myself. But what I'm most disturbed about is the fact that they come out, that they, the, the Democrats come out with the Biden campaign, with, you just read, the, it's an increasingly unhinged campaign of revenge. I mean, Donald Trump did not sound when he came out of that courtroom like he was full of revenge. And they talk about how he will now try to destroy the Constitution. It's just the opposite. Donald Trump is the strongest man I have ever met. There is no one who can withstand what this man has withstood. And I agree. For 40 years. He will fight the fight until the end. Right. And this is and we will fight with him that will legally him as best we can. His base. And hopefully along with that energy will, be, will come other people who will say to themselves, what did Donald Trump do wrong? What was it again that he did wrong? I'm not sure people know what he did wrong in this case. And, you know, I don't want to hear about, you know, well, the jury decided it was definitely right. Well, you know, the appellate court will decide that. But what I can tell you is that this is the ultimate in terms of election interference. We saw it with Letitia James. They tried, she tried to bankrupt him, and maybe she did. I don't know. We saw it with, with uh, Alvin Bragg, who's a Soros-funded prosecutor, and all of these prosecutors who want to take him down. Be careful what you wish for. And I don't want to see this happen because I believe in the system. To not believe in the system means that I wasted three decades of my life. I have to believe in the system. But the problem here is you have just energized the sleeping giant across America. That you know what? There are DAs in this country, in all 50 states, who say, I have the power to indict. I have a grand jury. Let's hit it. Especially against the president who protects I know the feeling of what they can do to you. He is coming up for, it, for a crime that he allegedly committed. I'll say that as a professional for trial on June 3rd. But where Any questions, just call me at 859 750 000. Lack of paying, uh, taxes in some very heavy income years. And now America is saying, you know what? Or check now out my YouTube channel under Travels with Dr. John and Stevenson. Our Facebook. Born of revolution. revolution is in our DNA. We are fighters, and I hope it's only at the ballot box. Don't get me wrong. But I am, my insides are so angry because this was not a case that should have been brought. Let me give you one more update, if you don't mind. This has just come in from the AP. Um, even though the White House had put out this statement, Greg, that um, the president would be making an official statement from the White House, apparently now, um, 
President Biden will not address Good. Trump's conviction tonight, for people Good. familiar. Mm -hmm. The plans are fluid, but the first comments likely to come in an informal setting in days ahead, mm -hmm. probably in response to a reporter's question. Uh, and you know, that won't be planned. Uh, they do, That'll just be a spontaneous question. That, uh, they do point out that President Biden is with his family today in Delaware on the anniversary of Bo's death. So not tonight, uh, but again, um, unlikely to. When does he talk to the press? In front of Marine One? Yeah, very few things in Biden's life are fluid except for his meals. Uh, I go back to my original point. If you look at Russian collusion, the P tape, Hunter's laptop, the constant investigations of the Trump family, the, relent the relentless kind of campaign is now routine. How can you not conclude that this entire thing is rigged? Mm -hmm. And it just it just informs that idea that Trump has been saying is that they if they don't like you, they're going to destroy you. That's they exactly right. Revenge. And it's interesting. It happens. Because wh why would they bring that up? Uh, it's because they feel mm -hmm. somehow that it is warranted. Trump didn't mention it. They did. Why else would you bring it up? It's like a guilty spouse. Every time he sees uh, an angry look from his husband or wife, goes, oh, my God, she knows. <laughs> you know, it's like they, they just go, well, you know, we did it. You know, and then, of course, they always use that, that old chestnut, no one is above the law. Yeah. And I go back to the original thing that Kat Tim said, and no one is below the law except for Trump. Trump. Basically, it's going to be anybody affiliated with Trump, any Republican, any conservative, all below and the law. tonight on your show, mm -hmm. you have Kevin O'Leary, who right. was here yesterday talking about his recent trip overseas when he was trying to bring investment into the country and everybody's saying this is real, and it's hurt the American brand. So that was just the trial and the story Daniel. Yes, he is on tonight. He is the on show tonight. is on. We are from, it is on, I get it is on, right? Um, Jesse and then Harry was born in New York City, who then came back and had a big part in creating the New York City skyline. Not many people have such a powerful imprint on this city as Donald Trump. And then page six fixture, big part of the 80s and 90s social scene here that defined New York City culture. And then grows that brand into a reality TV star with The Apprentice at the time of reality TV zenith. And then takes it even higher to the White House and keeps New York City safe, keeps New York City wealthy. And then you get a once in a hundred year pandemic and the man is on the phone with Cuomo sending ships, sending ventilators, doing everything he possibly can to help this city. And what does he get in return? He gets a sick DA with a crooked judge, a crooked judge yeah. and a ridiculous Biden Justice Department official who conspire mm -hmm. to destroy him because he was successful. Mm -hmm. It's a shame. It's a damn shame. Harold, uh, Alvin Bragg is going to have a press conference at 6.30 tonight, so there will be something. You know, he'll I'm, glad, I'm glad the president's not having having any words. It's probably appropriate. The DA, DAs would have, obviously speak after a case like this. But again, I just want to remind people, when the Supreme Court of the United States overturned abortion and overturned affirmative action in the last year and a half or so, there was there was an outrage. And I just, but I was upset about it, but you, we have to show restraint. This is how our system works. The court today, Judge, you can laugh all you want, but the I'm court, not listen, laughing at all. No, a, don't a, accuse me of well, laughing. I, forgive me, I thought you smirked. I, I, I did apologize. not smirk. I apologize. <laughs> forgive me. The Supreme Court, just in the last few days, <laughs> Unanimously, a, a liberal justice wrote the, wrote the decision in favor of the National Rifle Association, saying that they had been discriminated, that their, their First Amendment rights had been violated by the New York Department of Financial Services. For those who believe that President Trump has been wrong today, you may be right. And we will find out as he goes through this appeal process. Again, this is a tough day and a sad day for America. I meant no harm by what I said to you, Judge. I thought you I mistake. I did not. Mistaken. This is a very sad day for you. all of us. I agree Irrespective with you. of party, I agree. irrespective of affiliation, we have seen the criminal justice system weaponized to bring down a candidate for president and a former president. It is historic. 
This has never happened before in America. I think everyone should take a deep breath. I agree. Before they get upset about anything or accuse anyone of anything else. Amen. I would agree. All right. So just wrapping up here on the five, uh, Donald Trump found guilty on all 34 counts. Uh, Alvin Bragg will give a press conference at 6.30 p.m. So you, you, know, you st stick around for Fox. So we're going to have amazing coverage tonight from Brett Baer show, Jesse show, Laura Ingram, and then, of course, exclamation point all the way through. And then I'll see you on America's Newsroom in the morning. Coverage on the Trump verdict continues. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the show I taped for you. disgraceful trial. The real verdict is going to be November 5th by the people. And they know what happened here, and everybody knows what happened here. Former President Trump and I will ago. Good be supporting Bear him, Bear even though I can't vote. In the United States of America. <laughs> I will Donald be supporting Trump him, however, in any way I can. He convicted of felony crimes after a New York jury found him guilty on all 34 counts of falsifying business records in what prosecutors called a scheme to influence the 2016 election through payments to an adult film actress. That verdict exposes the former president to potential prison time, although it's not likely he's a first offender. As the presumptive Republican presidential nominee seeks a return to the White House, the judgment presents voters with another test of their willingness to accept the former president. He said the ultimate vote here will be the American people on November 5th, just moments ago after that jury read all, after all 34 counts were read and agreed to by the jury members. Correspondent Nate Foy is outside the New York State Supreme Court with the latest in what has been a very interesting day late. Good evening, Nate. Good evening, Brett. Former President Donald Trump did not show any emotion whatsoever as the jury returned a verdict of guilty on all counts in the first criminal trial ever involving a former U.S. president. After 11 and a half hours of deliberating, the jury found Trump guilty of falsifying business records to unlawfully influence the 2016 presidential election. As for what comes next, Trump now has 30 days to appeal. Jail time is considered unlikely because Trump has no criminal history and these are nonviolent crimes. Trump will now be interviewed by a probation officer before his sentencing hearing on July 11th. The former president faces four years through the same thing I had to go through. Counts, huh? But New York law limits the maximum sentence to 20 years for this level of felony. Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg posted on X writing after the verdict, quote, Today a jury, a jury found Donald J. Trump guilty on all 34 felony counts. Bragg watched from the courtroom as the guilty verdict came in. He's expected to hold a news conference later tonight. Trump attorney Todd Blanche argued the only way that the jury reached a guilty verdict is if they believed Michael Cohen's testimony. Blanche asserts that Cohen lied on the witness stand during this trial. Judge Mershon denied Blanche's motion. Cohen is the only person directly connecting Trump to a Stormy Daniels payoff leading up to the 2016 presidential election. So as we look forward, Brett, uh, with the legal and political calendar, the sentencing hearing I mentioned is on July 11th. That's just four days before the Republican National Convention in Milwaukee. Brett? Hey, for a great job uh, covering this from beginning to end. We appreciate it. I want to note uh, about the politics, thank you, uh, that the Trump donor site uh, for the campaign is currently down. Uh, it went down some 10 minutes right after uh, the verdict. We don't know what that means. Waiting for some reaction from the campaign. Uh, they're saying this could be their biggest fundraising day as they look at this and reaction to it. Let's get some analysis on the legal side and the political side. Trey Gowdy, former federal prosecutor, district attorney, and former congressman from South Carolina. Fox News chief legal correspondent, anchor of Fox News Sunday, Shannon Bream, and Jonathan Turley, professor at the George Washington University Law School. You all, uh, John, Trey, uh, your thoughts on this and how it all developed. Well, I think the more that we heard from Judge Marchand, the way that he was ruling on objections in the courtroom, the way that he allowed some uh, evidence in and barred other evidence, and the jury instructions he ultimately gave yesterday, a lot of people started to feel like 
this jury, first of all, is going to be very confused potentially, um, but also that they're given so many different off ramps that lead them to conviction that it would be surprising. Probably the best case scenario was going to be a hung jury. Now, there are a lot of things that I mentioned there that many people feel are reversible error potentially, meaning that on appeal, there is a good chance that this Trump legal team can score some victories. Maybe this conviction is ultimately overturned, but Brett, you know that's going to take weeks, months, years potentially, and certainly past this election, uh, which makes a lot of other things coming down the pike very important, including that immunity decision we're waiting on from the Supreme Court could get that as soon as next week, Brett. Jonathan, um, the appeal process uh, is a lengthy one, usually through uh, the New York appellate process. Is there possibly a way that this gets expedited because of uh, the concerns about the election in particular? Well, I think we're really out of runway needed to appeal this. The uh, I think that it'll go to the New York appellate court. There could be an effort. Uh, to go to the U.S. Supreme Court to cut that short. I just don't see the Supreme Court likely granting that type of expedited process any more than they did for Jack Smith. So he's very likely going to be in that New York appellate process for a while. This is a target-rich environment for appeal. Many of us believe there are layers of reversible error here, uh, and in the end, he very well could be vindicated. I think that that's part of what people have to understand, uh, that you could disagree with this decision. I'm disappointed in it because many of us feel this was a legally flawed case and that it was political in its motivations uh, by Alvin Bragg and others. But we are a nation committed to the rule of law. We have ways and people waiting to review uh, this case. I think that review is likely to go in Trump's uh, favor, but it may take a while. It may go into the federal system. But being in that courtroom today, you could feel the weight of history. Uh, for a lot of people in that room, it was clearly thrilling. Many of us thought it was a sad moment. Uh, it was also a bizarre moment because the judge had basically said the jury could not come to a verdict. And people were leaving the courtroom when the judge basically said, my mistake, we have a verdict. And it, it, there was just an absolute hush in the room, and it changed immediately. Of all the people in that room, the pressure was clearly building, but the one who didn't seem to show it was former President Trump. He, he didn't show any emotion at all as this mantra of 34 guilty verdicts was heard from the foreperson. All right, uh, we're looking live at the Trump motorcade uh, as it makes its way uh, through the streets of New York, uh, heading back to Trump Tower. Uh, Trey, we also have on the screen that uh, District Attorney Alvin Bragg is set to hold a news conference at 6.30 Eastern Time. We will take that live here on Fox. The District Attorney obviously ready to crow about a successful guilty on 34 counts. Um, but in order to get there, uh, Trey, as we've talked about many times, uh, he had to do some interesting things with those charges, and the judge had to do some interesting things with the instructions to the jury in this case. Yeah, they took a misdemeanor, uh, they put a tuxedo on it and called it a felony. Keep in mind, Brett, he, he ran for office promising to do what was done today. So if, if, if that's where we are as a country, where we're going to elect the chief law enforcement officer who promises to go after people, not crimes, you couple that with the evidentiary rulings from this judge. As you know, Brett, I was a prosecutor. I enjoyed some pro-prosecution judges. I had never seen one like Judge Mershon. I never saw, never saw a judge whose evidentiary rulings undercut the defense, uh, and, and that doesn't even get to the jury instructions, which were essentially a roadmap to a guilty to a guilty verdict. Juries are only as good you as the information they're given, so the verdict does not surprise me. And the fact that the time, Shannon, um, it, it seemed like guilty was was probably the way this was going, just by the timing of it. As we were looking at it, we were going to have a lot of time to digest the politics and the political fallout. Uh, the latest poll that we could find was a Marist poll that dealt with this um, specifically. If Donald Trump is found guilty in the hush money trial in New York, are you more likely to vote for him 15%, less likely 17%, or will it make no difference in your vote 67%? The question is, 
what does it mean politically uh, as this legal process continues to play out? Yeah, you remember, Brett, over a year ago, before he was indicted in this first case by Alvin Bragg, that when he was asked about potentially dropping out if indicted, he said no, that he thought it would help his numbers. We've referred to that many times because he was right. It's helped with fundraising. You mentioned their website is down right now. Has it been crashed because people showed up there and responded to their text calling for fundraising? It's helped him in the polling. It helped him get rid of all of his rivals in the GOP primary as each of them were forced to go out and essentially defend him against what they have all been calling a political political prosecution through these cases. So there's been um, definitely some political upside. You heard the president come out after the verdict today. Um, he was pretty subdued, but he was fighting. And that's what his folks like to see. His supporters want that. They like that about him. They feel like he's fighting for them as well. So he said, this is far from over. And now the decision, the verdict comes to the people. On fighting the for the people. I think that'll be the line going forward that seems to really rally his base, whether it connects with independence. We know there's a very small group that's movable at this point, and we'll see how they feel. Yeah, as again, we're looking at the Trump motorcade live going through uh, Manhattan. You know, we've had a flurry of statements from uh, political figures, most of them uh, on the right. Uh, we did have a statement from the Biden campaign. We expect something more from perhaps the president himself. Uh, but Speaker Mike Johnson uh, put out a pretty lengthy statement in which he in part said, today is a shameful day in American history. Democrats uh, cheered as they convicted the leader of the opposing party on ridiculous charges predicated on the testimony of of a disbarred convicted felon. This is a purely political exercise, not a legal one. Uh, continuing, the American people see this as lawfare. They know it's wrong and dangerous. President Trump will rightfully appeal this absurd verdict and he will win. You know, we talked a little bit about the appeal process and what's going to happen. Let's take a look really quickly at what comes next, specifically in this legal process for former President Trump. Correspondent C.B. Cotton is outside the New York State Supreme Court as well tonight. Good evening, C.B. <clears throat> Hi, good evening, Brett. Yeah, this appeals process could buy former President Donald Trump time to challenge this conviction before the November election. So Trump's team has 30 days to file a notice of appeal with New York. The Democrats and the there, Republican Democrats are coming together, to be and Donald Trump's going to win big. I see Peekaboo, the little black and white cat, and I see Josephine, that little oh, golden brown cat, and they are on the bed together, both saying, we feel bad for Donald Trump, and we want him elected to protect all cat's rights and human rights. Nothing to do Love you with all. the charges in this case. <laughs> Judge Juan Marchand said Gotta that have the a little detailed humor in this thing, you know. was, quote, unnecessary, Sadness. but ultimately he denied both requests and said the defense was partly to blame for allowing that testimony to stray. Trump's lawyers may also appeal over the prosecutor's novel legal strategy that we've been talking about. Again, Trump was charged with 34 felony counts of falsifying business records. Those are typically uh, a misdemeanor under New York state law, but again, the DA charged those counts as felonies, alleging the records covered up a second crime, a violation of a New York state election law, which makes it a crime to promote a candidate's election through, quote, unlawful means. Now, Brett, if this conviction is upheld upon appeal, Trump could then try, try to appeal to New York's highest appeals court. And then at that point, he could take this case all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. You may remember uh, more than two decades ago in Bush v. Gore, the U.S. Supreme Court did become involved in a state matter, finding that Florida could not reassess those votes, therefore um, upholding the election that Bush won. Back to you. Okay, CB, thank you. Uh, again, reaction coming in uh, fast and furious. One of the first people uh, putting out a statement, uh, former Secretary of State, former CIA Director Mike Pompeo, uh, saying the future of this country should and will be decided by the American people in an election, not by 12 New Yorkers in the travesty of a politicized courtroom. Uh, Tom Cotton, Senator from Arkansas, as we look live at uh, the Trump motorcade again. I love Pompeo. He's a great uh, man. Cotton saying the Trump jury made a mistake partly because the nakedly part 
partisan judge biased the trial at every turn from allowing an unconstitutional indictment in the first place to excluding key evidence to rigging the jury instructions. The American people see right through Joe Biden and the Democrats' weaponization of the legal system against Absolutely. them. Absolutely. Speaking of the Democrats and the reaction so far, we've only gotten reaction from the Biden-Harris campaign. Uh, let's talk about that. And that reaction from White House correspondent Peter Ducey, he's live on the North Lawn. Good evening, Peter. And Brett, good evening. There is now some White House reaction coming from the council's office, and it falls way short of some of the reporting about what we might hear from the White House and officials calling President Trump officially convicted, uh, convicted felon Donald Trump. Instead, the council's office spokesman is just saying, we respect the rule of law and have no additional con uh, comment right now. There is nothing official from President Biden, and you can count on one hand the amount of times that he has referenced this case over the last few months. He said at one point he knows Trump is free on Wednesdays, which is when court was out, and he has joked that Trump is busy. Uh, but the first, the closest thing to Biden reaction is coming from the campaign in Wilmington and the communications director who says, in part, Donald Trump has always mistakenly believed he would never face consequences for breaking the law for his own personal gain. But today's verdict does not change the fact that the American people face a simple reality. There's only one way to keep Donald Trump out of the Oval Office at the ballot box. Convicted felon or not, Trump will be the Republican nominee for president. And this is gonna have no difference in the way 67% of voters are gonna approach November in a new NPR PBS Marist poll. 17% are saying a guilty verdict makes them more likely to back Trump 15% say less likely. Speaker Mike Johnson is saying, uh... All right, let's listen into, see if we can hear anything at the John the Trump vote. Hold on. fist pump and uh, walking in. He has had a number of truth social posts today uh, and uh, we expect there'll be something more than we saw perhaps at the cameras right after he left the courtroom. Peter, we interrupted there. Uh, you were making the point that I made earlier about how many people this affects potentially in the election. Do the Biden, does the Biden campaign see that or are they looking to capitalize obviously on, on this moment? It seems like they do see it because uh, they are still trailing in a lot of polls and decided that yesterday, after weeks of a trial, was the day they had to finally go to New York and address all the cameras. I will point out, uh, they said they only did that press conference in New York outside the trial because that's where all the cameras are. Well, next week, all the cameras are going to be right by Campaign HQ in Wilmington, Delaware, for Hunter's gun trial. Uh, we don't expect to hear much from President Biden about that or this. He is not here at the White House. He and the rest of the first family are in Delaware right now. They are marking today, which is the ninth anniversary of Bo Biden's passing. So the first on-camera reaction, or at least the first chance at that, is going to be at some point tomorrow, either when the president is coming back or when he is hosting the Kansas City Chiefs for their Super Bowl presentation here at the White House, Brett. Uh Peter, what is next uh, physically for the, the president as far as a campaign trail? Do we have anything on that? They're going to use the world stage to try to show uh, that the president is the diplomat in the race because we don't think he's going to have anything all weekend. And then at the beginning of next week, he will fly to France for the 80th anniversary of D-Day, which fits in with the whole Biden campaign theme of the last couple months, that he is a defender of democracy. We also hear... Joe Biden talked a lot about a report that Donald Trump and his allies dispute in the Atlantic that Trump went to France for a different anniversary five years ago and called the people that were buried there suckers and losers. You can expect next week to be a lot more of President Biden bringing that back while he talks about democracy and threats to democracy and freedom versus fascism. Uh, but in terms of actually going to the Great Lakes uh, Blue Wall states or the Sun Belt states, that's not going to come for a couple more weeks. It seems like the the big uh, they're building up for a trip to Europe and then uh, practice for the debate, which is in less than a month. 
That's right. Um, okay, Peter Ducey, stand by if you would. Thank you. Uh, I want to go back to the legal eagles really quickly, uh, Jonathan and Trey and Shannon. Jonathan, uh, we talked about the appeal process. It's expected that this is going to be filed, at least quickly. We've heard that the sentencing uh, from Judge uh, Juan Marchand is going to come down on July 11th. Again, that's four days before the start of the Republican National Convention. What are the possibilities for sentencing? And if an appeal is filed before that, does the sentence and get delayed? It can be delayed if those appeals are successful. It's unlikely. Uh, you know, it's also unlikely that he would get jail time. It's a first offender. Uh, these are not violent offenses. Uh, I also believe that uh, Judge Mershon will have to recognize how uh, he would set off a cascading problem if you try to even put a the leading presidential candidate on home confinement uh, in New York. Uh, so you're going to have multi-tracks going forward. There's going to be appeals taken. Well, he does, um, he, the president will be subject to a, an interview with the probation officer and then a sentencing. Uh, most of us are assuming that there's not going to be jail time, but it's, uh, the judge obviously has some leeway. Uh, but I also expect you're going to find some sort of three-point shots. Uh, they might try to leapfrog to the Supreme Court, as unlikely as that is. The important thing is people have to remember around here, uh, you can see there are very upset people here, and there's also many people who I can only describe as an ecstasy over this, uh, this verdict. But for most Americans, I think they have to recognize that these moments are also a leap of faith in our system. Uh, you can disagree with this verdict, uh, not hate the jury for it. You can really believe in the system enough that this can be reversed. I think what you were just repeating, uh, Brett, is that a lot of people seem to be taking that view. They are not taking the verdict on its face uh, as, uh, as validating these, these charges. There is a feeling that, this, that the president can't seem to escape this vortex of New York, that he's being pulled from courthouse to courthouse. So in some ways, the president's going to regain control of that message. He will certainly regain control of the legal side as he picks what appeals to take as it unfolds in the coming days. Yeah, Shannon, in fact, uh, Judge Marchand made a point in one of the Q&As uh, back and forth after the defense uh, stood up and ended a statement saying uh, that this could end up with the former president in jail. He said, no, that's a ridiculous, outrageous statement because I make the decision about the sentencing, suggesting that it, it's not going to be that. I, I guess what the, the Mark Levins and other constitutional folks are saying is that this is a due process situation for the election, not necessarily necessarily for the, the candidate, but for the American people, the voter, and whether that expedites some kind of roadway to the Supreme Court or not. Yeah, and that would be something that if you're the Trump legal team, why not try it? It doesn't mean it's going to be successful. Uh, it has a chance, like anything else you would put out into the legal universe, that there's a possibility. It takes a number of votes. There were before, uh, generally to take up a case, of five for something that's considered an emergency petition. Um, but for something to jump from a state court, something that starts out as solely a state court case, uh, over to the Supreme Court, it doesn't happen a lot. But if you can show an issue, a federal constitutional issue with the justices, um, um, you know, I, I think that Mark is the one who referred to uh, Bush v. Gore and some of the, the legislative, uh, excuse me, the, um, the litigation that was happening down in Florida during 2000 uh, that got to the Supreme Court. Um, there can be times you push into that question. Now, as we know, there are two other cases the Supreme Court is already considering. Uh, right now, we're waiting on those from them that could impact President Trump in a big way legally. And remember, they had a unanimous decision earlier this year uh, to keep him on the ballot when there were a number of states that tried to kick him out under the 14th Amendment. They are loath to get involved in political issues unless absolutely drawn into them as a general rule. So I, I think that um, that appeal, if it came directly from this, from the Trump legal team, is worth a try. I would not put the probability that the justices would take it very high. Yeah. Uh, Trey, last thing, uh, we are waiting again at the bottom of the hour. We expect uh, the district attorney, um, Alvin Bragg, to come out and present uh, in front of the reporters. And it's said that it's a news conference. We'll see what that develops into. What do you expect him to say? Um, having been a prosecutor, um, on the winning side of 34 counts, uh, finding the former president of the United States guilty. I think he will feign uh, humility. He will talk about the rule of law 
Uh, I'll be curious, Brett. I, it's, it, it's hard for those of us not from New York to find a crime for which you actually can be in prison in New York. I mean, they're not known for being really tough on felons, so, and, and especially not Alvin Bragg. Remember, he came into office with a very long list of things that he would not bother to prosecute. So uh, he, he'll gloat a little bit, but he may have won the battle and lost the war. I will be surprised. I'll be surprised if the rest of America reacts the way that Manhattan and the, and the press corps reacted to this verdict. It, I think it's a sad day for people who like a justice system that actually is, is blind. Right. Right. Okay. Legal 